Hey, what's up? Chanel, welcome to a new episode of Prince Not Dead. We're gonna be blasting Dead Infection with a chapter of Accident. 1995 bootleg, I think. I think that's what I was told last night, that this is the 1995 bootleg. Or a 1997 bootleg, I'm not sure off the top of my head, I forget, but it's Dead Infection, fuck yeah. It's gross and crushing, it's awesome. If you don't like Dead Infection, I don't know what to tell you, I know some of you don't like the real gore, only death is real, keep that in mind. But we're going to be talking about Chopping Heads zine, issue number one, Hails to Evil Ed. I have his personal note downstairs, but greetings, freaks. You have a nice photo from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Welcome to Chopping Heads, Issue 1, a zine for fans of horror movies, grindcore, death metal, noisecore, sick art, and other weird shit. That's a lot of different genres for one zine, you say? You like death metal, but there's no fucking way you'll listen to any of that noisecore trash? For me, all the things above are part of the same depraved and dysfunctional family. Horror movies are the dribbling grandpa to the murderous, mentally unhinged grandkids' grind and death. Noise, core, and gore is the lousy, three-legged family dog, but you'd still piss on it if it was on fire. And you never know when you'll get a visit from those others in the family, that weird cousin. Maybe they brought some weed! So relax, you know these people, they're you. By Evil Ed, front cover by at Murray Keaton Arts. Back cover by Goryar Metal Art. Here's the back cover. Weed saves lives. I love the fucking border here. And the cover art is fan-fucking-tastic. I actually put the sticker on my bike in a nice prominent place. And this is a fucking great zine from the UK. I have to thank Chopping Heads for sending this my way. Blown away by how good this is. First off, top 10 movie melts. And there's where the Accursed Womb logo was inspired from the film Street Trash which has the number two body melting movie melt of all time according to Chopping Head Zine Street Trash from 1987 worth watching for the notorious toilet melt alone booze addicted bums are lushing out on the bargain basement liquor viper we were going to name the t-shirt the Viper design, but I decided let's just call it the Street Trash logo instead of, instead of the Viper logo. Which does more than upset your guts. It turns them into a multicolored mess. It's disgusting and hilarious, as in the entire movie. You're going to need a courtesy flush. And they gave Robocop the number one position, rightfully so. Great, great, like, oh my god, it's gnarly. And you also have The Fly 2, Cube Zero, Jason Goes to Hell, Warlock 2, Necronomicon, Fright Night, I forgot about that one, The Incredible Melting Man, Body Melt, Street Trash, and Robocop. Super sick. Now we have some demo reviews called The Doctor's Dissection, Dungeon of Death Metals. Dungeon of Death Metal. Engrossed gets covered here. A 
congenital deformity as well, which sounds like in engraved growls of an unholy Lovecraftian beast. For fans of asbestos poisoning, flat beer, toilet paper, toilet paper that chafes your asshole. There's a lot of fucking sick demos on here that are worth checking out. That's why zines rule. And I was super stoked when I saw what the cult classic was here. I'm sorry, I'm looking for my copy of it right now, but it's right in front of me. Oh my god, it's upside down. Corpse fucking art, a puzzle of flesh. Got the classic of the month here. Cult classic. Corpse Fucking Art, A Puzzle of Flesh, EP, original release, 1999. Fuck yeah. That's awesome. Label Props, Bringer of Gore Records. I've never heard of them, and their evil sibling, Metalarg Records, are twin labels headed by Mark Luton from his headquarters in Belgium. Interesting. Got a nice little interview. Oh, he keeps it fucking... Bands like, uh... Cumsock. Alright, I guess this is more of a gore label. Extreme noise grind, it seems like. Yeah, I'm always shifting what I listen to from grind to noise to gore grind, gore, gore noise, even some devastating industrial slash doom and old school death metal. Eat noise and die. But here we have, wow, a bio on Jeff Kober. That's kind of cool. He's been in so much shit over the years. I was going to say, I remember him in Sons of Anarchy, but this, if you're doing your college thesis on New York death metal, for example... An article like this is amazing. Six samples going over Mortician and their love of horror movie samples. And I just think it's very interesting. Like, And it says even Mortician were not the first band to do it. Because we all know, folks. No matter what, this was one of the first. But it doesn't really matter. It's awesome that it's been done. And props if you've seen all the movies that they've sampled. It would make an awesome watch list. Next issue is Warsaw. And it's just kind of cool. It goes over like the movies like When a Stranger Calls. When that's Blood Craving. One of the best Mortician songs personally going over some of the more underground gnarly drummers and extreme music. We have uh, Sulfuric Cultury and uh, I think a Horrendous Miscreation. Isaac. I'm pretty sure that's who this is for. Yeah, jamming with Sulfuric Cartery or however you pronounce it. I apologize. Nice borders. Real cool interviews in here. And from the cinema sewer, Mike Bracken, a.k.a. the horror geek, he does the cinematic sewer. So here we have from the cinema sewer and fucking Chud from New York. Released in 1984 and directed by Douglas Cheek. This is a classic fucking film. If you've never seen Chud, it's a classic. Homer Simpson even mentions it in 
one of my favorite Simpsons episodes, The City of New York vs. Homer Simpson, which was actually banned for a while, but I love this little segment right here. With good old H.A., they go over his art, and his art is fan-fucking-tastic, in case you did not know. There's a nice interview with him that goes over his art and everything. Like, he did the new art on the uh, Mortify Stench of Swedish Buzzsaw release. Which is fucking dope. And here's Bob Rott's Atrocity Exhibition, where there's art from Instagram along with usernames and everything. Like right here, we have Matt Steiker at Bargain Bin Blasphemy. Look at that fucking thing. That's badass. Like these are people you want, you know, if you're in a band to help design your merch, whatever. Like, this is Jada Cravo at J-O-T-A-C-R-A-V-O. I think that was used. But that was n that's fucking sick looking. If I was in, like, a Doom band, that would be, like, something I would use. I like this introspective dark art inspired by Giger and a little bit of Lovecraft. Pretty cool looking. Looks very 90s, kind of. But you could see the Giger inspiration, the, ki the kind of biomechanicalism. But this is um by... At R U T T N A by Daniel Francisco. This is courtesy of the Scolding House Records at Bandcamp.com. It's just some filthy monster beast with boobs. Pretty filthy. Here's some beer tasting stuff. I, I don't drink, so I don't really care too much. But if you booze, then, you know, definitely check out beers by, like, fucking I Hate God, Pig Destroyer, Iron Maiden has a whole beer review here. There's a lot of bands out there that have fucking their own signature beers, which is pretty cool. But here's more Iron Maiden beer. Up your noise hole. Oh my god. And this is, uh... Talking about... Bands like Gangrene Discharge. Bullshit Noise at StoreV.net. Punctured Esophagus at Bandcamp.com. Yeah, so this is a one-man bullshit horror-loving gore noise. I love how the man himself describes the harsh, heinous noise police pollution being pumped out by punctured esophagus. And here we have a nice nostalgic look back at Phlegm. If you've never heard Phlegm, they're one of those classic death metal bands that I consider essentially checking out it's fucking greasy grimy death metal great big globs of greasy grimy gopher guts mutilated monkey meat chopped little birdies feet maybe in the early days of death metal bands cared less about how they'd be perceived but Flem was a big fuck off to the idea that a band should live up to its general label. I like the witch hat mushrooms added here. Witch hat mushrooms will make you trip the fuck out. And Consumed by the Dead is one of those releases from 1991, Sir Demo. I've wanted to get so bad. Here is 
2020, the year of the virus. They go over sick shit from 2020. Faceless Burial, Crypt Worm, Internal Rot, Eraser, Brain Damage, Drain, Damage, Cryptic Shift, tons of stuff. Acid Feast, Afterbirth, Windagong, The Chasm of Aeon Split, Miasmic Necrosis. And then Chopping Heads has a cheers to all the people who are kind enough to contribute with their awesome artwork. It's pretty much the only quality qu content this zine has. I really like it. And thanks to anyone who bought this. Hopefully you enjoyed at least some of it. Hit me up at Chopping Heads with a Z, zine at gmail.com. I know they have an Instagram too. Links will be in the video description. It's a good zine. It's a good read. It's no frozen screams, but it's definitely a nice read. I enjoyed it. Check it out. Especially if you live in the UK. I do, I do not know the cost of this. So yeah, I'll put a link in the video description. It's definitely worth checking out, but like I said, there's a lot of zines out there. Like, here's all the Frozen Screams, which I, I personally love. It's more of a look at American death metal. Then there's the Head Split newsletters. There's all sorts of, of crazy stuff out there. Then there's stuff I've yet to go over yet, like Earsturbation. Trust me, there's a lot of gnarly shit. I think they're doing a new Soul Grinder zine soon. And an Echoes of Death zine. I think a Cursed Womb's doing something with the zine, but I forget the name. Like, off the top of my head. Here's another sick one. I always liked the Echoes of Death zine. Going over bands like fucking Crips, Undeath, Coyotes, Skeletal, labels like Lycanthropic Chance. Sorry, I got a little book bend. And then there's even BMX zines. Which makes me very happy to see that BMX print is still alive. Going to show that print itself is still alive. So, like, you know, if you're complaining about Decibel being very one-sided when it comes to reviews, why don't you make your own zine? Or make your own videos or something like that. Because this all started because I wanted to make a video zine about music. And, I mean, it kind of is, in my opinion, but at the same time, it's not. But we were blasting Dead Infection. So good. Chapter of Accidents. It's a bootleg, but... I'm sorry, Dead Infection. I think it's fucking sick. Like, the way it is, I mean. I, I would love to have the official version, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. Dead Infection, a chapter of accidents. Awesome fucking stuff. And Chopping Head Zine, issue one. A good issue one, definitely. Check it out. Interesting stuff. I can't wait to hear more. Especially if, you know, you're sick of this magazine. But I I still read Decibel. And I like seeing when, like, friends of mine are in it and stuff. I think it's kind of fucking cool. And then there's always these articles that never get old. And that is, like, Ripping Corpse fucking Hall of Fame. Like, what? 
that's badass. So like stuff like that's a reason that decibels important. If you care about the past, because here's pretty much a, a making of the album when it comes to dreaming with the dead. Like rare band photos, live, super sick shit from, you know, Cannibal Corpse and their newest member, Eric Rutan. One of the best East Coast death metal acts ever. But print is not just decibel, and that's what this part is all about, this video series. But, like I was saying, we were blasting Dead Infection, a chapter of accidents, filthy, filthy stuff. But as always, thanks for watching, you fucking rule. Hey.